if, if I could just weigh in there, since uh, Chairman Wagoff did ask me the question, here's where, for your listeners, John, this gets just incredibly interesting, complicated, frustrated, however you want to say it, all of the above. So one of the reasons I think FERC currently has been reluctant to be more assertive on making sure that 2222 is implemented in the manner in which Chairman Wellinghog lays out, which I'm strongly supportive, is the focus on transmission. And right now, now in, that is the, the primary focus of the commission right now is getting transmission reforms right. And it's at the thrust of what we're discussing here today, fixing the broken interconnection queue process, getting a solution on siting, on cost allocation, on interregional planning, on putting competition into transmission. But all of this today is requiring a delicate balance between FERC and the states. And as a result right now, I think FERC is really, really reluctant to kind of push the envelope with the states. And uh, in, a, in a weird way, I think it's inhibiting the commission from doing what it wants to do on being more assertive on 2222 compliance and implementation, the fact that they want to preserve the, the current detente with the states and not force something on the states that uh, they're reluctant to do so at a time when they need maximum state cooperation on transmission. So I'm not saying that Chairman Wellinghouse is not completely correct on SMD and on 2222. I think the obstacle is interestingly tied to transmission and what it will take to successfully get transmission reform done. Or we could have FERC just become the master of all, and then they just do as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems to go back to this. Easier Senate said than, easy, yes, easier said but, than but Chairman Chatterjee, it, it seems to go back to this magical Senate committee that, that the FERC commissioners answer to and have a little bit of fear about. Um, and if we can adjust that Senate committee to represent more of the people's interests, the re the energy users' interests, we might have uh, a situation that would be more tenable. Um, great comments on both around SMDs and, and of course, FERC 2222. Great acknowledgement of uh, 841 as a, as a predecessor and a real setting the stage for you know, unfortunately, we hear at the uh, at the the CPU levels um, the what has been characterized as the decline or defanging of 2022 happening sort of in real time, uh, unfortunately. And and the next point around uh, prohibit anti-competitive behavior um, was cited by both commissioners as something that you know we really need to get right. And and the solution here is what? How do we prevent? uh this type of behavior is it higher fees for people getting caught is it jail time actual doing a perp walk or how do we make this stick i'll start here i have a more sympathetic view here uh, you know I, I don't necessarily take the view that there's nefarious actors here trying to avoid competition uh, i take the more charitable view that i just think the incentives are misaligned and to me, the answer here is, is finding a better way to incentivize the incumbents to embrace the opportunities uh, and not look at the introduction of innovation as a threat to uh, uh, their monopolies. And so, and this is something, quite frankly, that my staff and I wrestled with when we were putting together 2222. There are several on my team who really felt as if we should structure the rule in a manner to better enable smaller new entrants to come into the markets and compete. And I had others on my team say, Neil, if you really want to see the benefits of this rulemaking maximized in an accelerated fashion, the key will be to find a way to make the big incumbent utilities incentivized to do it and so they can make money off of it. And, and profit from it and view it as an opportunity and not as a threat. And so I, I like to take the more positive charitable view that if we can find a way to work with utilities to uh, you know, incentivize them and better properly align the incentive structure so that they want to avail themselves of these opportunities, 
uh, rather than viewing them as a threat, uh, I would like to try that. Uh, John and I have worked on some matters together where we've been frustrated by the reaction that we have seen from some of the counterparties we have attempted to work with. I'm not going to name and shame. I'll keep it very vague. But, um, uh, you know, it, it, it is frustrating because I, I think there is a constructive conversation to be had here. We just have to get stakeholders to the table uh, who are willing to compromise and understand that everyone can win here. And this doesn't have to be some zero sum game where there's a winner and a loser. Thank you, Chairman Chatterjee, for those ideas around prohibit the anti-competitive behavior side of things. For the sake of um, um, brevity, uh, Chairman Wellinghoff, shall we move to DSO, D IDSOs, sure. the, uh, in the distribution service operators? Sure, I'd be happy to. I, I wrote a paper, it must be now uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, on this concept of an independent distribution system operator. And I was simply taking an analogy from what FERC had already done at the wholesale level, where, where, where FERC had uh, enabled, um, you know, through Order 888, 889, the ability to create these independent uh, system operators for uh, the operation of the wholesale um, transmission system as an RTO ISO regional transmission operator, independent system operator, and as a market operator. And taking that same concept down to the distribution level, especially to the extent that, um, you know, we have talked here, um, Commissioner uh, Chairman Chatterjee um, and yourself have talked about um, EVs and other distributed resources and the important of the importance of those resources, those resources, first of all, live down at the distribution level, and they are going to become exceedingly important, not only to providing wholesale uh, transmission level services, which in fact, they are doing now and capable of doing uh, demand response and uh, distributed generation and distributed storage are all serving uh, and providing support to that wholesale uh, market level uh, throughout the country and keeping the lights on, but they will be able to do similar things at the distribution level as well. And if we have then markets at a distribution level providing, you know, um, inter uh, consumer services between, you know, my house that has the um, solar system on, on its rooftop and Neil's house across the street that needs some energy, um, you know, having those kinds of transactions is going to require an independent operator. It's going to require somebody independent from the distribution monopoly wires provider. Uh, and they are not the one uh, to be the proper party ultimately to provide uh, that independent platform for those transactions. Uh, I would also add, we've talked about EVs quite a bit, but I mean, we can also look at as an, at, at any HVAC system, whether it's residential or commercial yes. or industrial, as uh, something that we can uh, manage as a resource behind the meter and can really benefit the local distribution network tremendously. Tr so truly, truly, any, any load uh, that is behind the meter, I mean, think about your refrigerator's defrost cycle. Do you care yeah. when when your refrigerator freezer defrosts or not? You don't. So if you can, you know, switch that in, in ways that you, it can benefit the grid and provide you with value, value back to you as a consumer, we should be able to ena enable that and right. enable it not only at the wholesale level, which we are doing now, but down at the distribution level. But to do that, you need an independent distribution system operator. Yeah, peer to peer be energy trading at the local level is quite compelling, uh, especially with people that are investing in these assets. Let me get uh, Chairman Chatterjee's uh, thoughts on uh, IDSO and uh, the potential for a solution there. I actually don't have anything to add to what Chairman Willinghoff laid out. He's given a lot more thought to this than I have, and so I defer Great. to his expertise and experience. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Well, um, I, I just want to summarize, uh, as we've talked about six different ideas. First is competition. Second is a carbon price. The third is possibly having FERC everywhere, magically, how wonderful yeah. that would be. And we're going to have to get that Senate committee call out. 
Um, we're going to develop the SMB world uh, around that unified market. We're going to have a fair and full implementation of Order 2022, the, the master stroke of uh, Chairman Chatterjee, based on a lot of prior uh, thought leadership by others, including uh, Chairman Wellinghoff. Anti-competitive behavior being uh, punished. Uh, one of the suggestions there was uh, maybe we give incentives for the incumbents to move in this direction of DERs. And then finally, uh, really develop a market around um, independent distribution service operators so that we can have a true peer-to-peer -peer valuing of not only generation from renewables, but also um, load flexibility delivered by behind the meter assets. Um, this has been an absolutely incredible session together. Um, I want to give Ted Thomas a chance to chime in if he has any questions for either the chairman, um, or if not, we can just conclude and uh, put a top on this and, and hopefully do another session uh, in the future. Ted? All right. Ted doesn't have anything okay. more to say. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Um, nope, I've enjoyed the conversation. Don't have any questions. I thank uh, both former chairman for their uh, time. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Ted, for your prior contributions to session 101 and, and 201, and we encourage people to watch those. We're going to have these slides down below in the show notes so everyone can share them amongst their friends. Um, I want to give great thanks to both uh, Chairman Wellinghoff and Chairman Chatterjee and, of course, Ted Thomas for his long commitment to this idea of educating everyone around these really important issues of interconnecting and fair operation of renewable behind the meter assets and distributed energy resources. Thanks everyone and talk to you soon. All right, we're gonna break that down and we'll edit out the back bit. Um, thank you all for doing this session together. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we might even have further communication around next steps, but I know you've all gotta go. And um, thanks again. Thank you, John. Thanks.